DB2 for Linux, Unix, and Windows use a threaded architecture with a few main processes. In the figure, ellipses represent threads, and the rectangles I'm highlighting represent processes. On the left side, we see two applications. One is remote, meaning it's on a different server, and the other one is local, meaning it's on the same server where DB2 is running. After going through a firewall, they will interact with the DB2CC process, the big, the big gray rectangle I'm highlighting, which is the main DB2 engine process for your instance. On Windows, the process name is DB2CCS. Know that if you kill DB2CC, you will bring down DB2 forcibly. This is not recommended, and as it may corrupt some data, but in some situations, it may be the last resource. Let's take a look at this using the Windows Task Manager and the command line processor. So if we go to Processes from the Windows Task Manager, and after sorting it, we look for everything that has DB2 as part of the name of the process. Right now, we only have two processes, but if we start the instance, we'll see what happens. DB2 will start. Now we see db2 start.exe here, which is going to launch, launch the instance. And now that disappears, and we can see now db2cc and the memory it's consuming. If we do a db2 stop, then we will see that process disappears. This is a process, db2cc is a process that is per instance. So I'm going to start this same process again. So you can see it here again. But now I'm going to create a new instance, or actually I already have an instance created. So I'm going to change to that instance and make sure it's started. So I do set db2 instance my inst, and then I do a db2 start for that instance. And now what we can see is db2 start is working there to start the second instance, but now we have two db2 cc as processes, one for each instance. Now going back to the presentation slide, we can see that within the db2cc process, there are many threads represented by ellipses, as mentioned before. And the main thread happens to be also called db2cc. This thread spawns other threads, each of which is used for different purposes. For example, db2ipccm is used to listen for connections from local client applications. Once a connection request comes in from this local client application, it would spawn or invoke an agent from the idle agent pool. And this agent, called DB2 agent, would take care of handling this application. You can think of an agent as a little worker performing DB2 operations on behalf of the client. A similar situation will happen in the case of a remote client application where a remote listener thread will be checking for connections from remote clients. There will be different listeners depending on the protocol that is being used. For example, for TCP IP, there is a listener thread called DB2 TCP CM. Once a listener picks up a request, it will request an agent from the pool to handle this application. Also, depending on what you are doing on the database, other threads may be spawned. For example, at the application level, there is a DB2 agent, which is a coordinator agent for other workers. And that agent may spawn other agents known as sub-agents. And this could happen if, for example, you enable intraparallelism by turning on the parameter intraparallel in the DBM CFG. This would spawn other agents to divide the work at the database level, you may have other threads that perform other operations. For example, DB2 log GW is related to logging. For prefetching, we have DB2 PFCHR. 
for deadlock detection we have db2 d locked for page cleaners to clean the buffer pool we have db2 pc lnr and so on edus stands for engine dispatchable unit which is basically an agent or threat also per request you may have other threats the book getting started with db2 express c has more information about these threats on the left side we see also some rectangles in pink the db2 w dog or db2 watchdog db2 vend db2 fmp and db2 acd these are other processes not threads and they are described also in the book for example db2 fmp is useful because it separates the db2 engine code and address space from older code used for store procedures and user-defined functions if the store procedure or a user-defined function were running on the same address space as a db2 engine and if they were incorrectly coded then they could bring db2 down so that's why it's important to have them running on a separate um, using a separate process which is db2 fmp moving on to the next slide we will talk briefly about connection concentrator in the past for every connection to a database a db2 agent had to be allocated to handle this connection so for example if you had 1000 connections to a database this would imply that 1000 db2 agents had to be spawned each agent can take between 1 meg to 5 meg of memory so the more agents the more memory is consumed on the server therefore connection concentrator was created so that many connections could be handled by one agent connection concentrator is enabled when the dbm cfg parameter max underscore connections is greater than max underscore cord agent so for example if max connections is set to 1000 and max cord agents is set to 200 then each coordinator agent would handle five connections which is you know 1000 divided by 200 <music>